As you know, we cover emulation on this channel and we've covered many different ones over the years. But one system that we've never even looked at is the PlayStation Vita. When we think about the Vita, we are immediately drawn to what an amazing handheld it is and continues to be. Not only can it run its fair share of emulators itself, up to and including the Sega Dreamcast and Nintendo 64, its built-in PSP backward compatibility is the icing on the cake. In short, if you don't own a Vita and want some portable emulation on the go, then the Vita continues to be a great system. But what about PlayStation Vita emulation? running on other target hardware, such as Windows, Android, and Linux. That's something less talked about and less known about, simply because emulating a PlayStation Vita is complex. Emulating the various subsystems of the Vita is a challenge. However, one emulator that's been in the works for quite a while is known as Vita 3K. Originally, its use was mainly for supporting homebrew development and wasn't really considered essential for those that want to play their old Vita games. But in recent times, Vita 3K has seen some significant enhancements with a fairly impressive compatibility list. And all of a sudden, things are starting to move fast. So it's time to jump on and take a look at the emulator and see how well it performs. We're going to test Vita 3K on a few different devices, including the Steam Deck. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Now, first of all, Vita 3K is open source and free to download. There are nightly builds available for Windows, Linux, Mac, and Android. So no matter what system that you have, you should be able to run PlayStation Vita games. Now, before we proceed, let's talk about general compatibility of the emulator. It's still quite buggy, prone to crashing for no reason, and there are performance issues which are noticeable with many games even on the fastest PC. As of the making of this episode, we're talking about 44% in terms of the total set of Vita games that can be considered fully playable. Now you might be thinking that this is lower than expected and you would be right. However, this doesn't really tell us the full story because over the last few months, progress has been significantly increased and many must own Vita titles have gone from simply crashing or having performance or graphical issues to becoming fully playable. And I expect that this list will improve fairly significantly over the coming months. In short, there is some really good work that's being done here. Now, installing and setting up Vita 3K is quite easy to do thanks to a simple wizard to get you going. Just like RPCS3, Vita emulation requires an official firmware file that you will need to install first, and it will simply direct you to the Sony page to download the latest PS Vita firmware, as well as a system font update. Once you've installed these two pieces, then the emulator is ready to go. Now, the next step, of course, is to provide some Vita games. You can easily dump your own VPK files with a modded Vita, and of course, you can easily find these games online. This choice is up to you, of course. As far as configuration, there are quite a few things to consider, but configuring Vita 3K is fairly simple. The main options that you might consider changing are the backend renderer. Right now, you get a choice of OpenGL and Vulkan. Unfortunately, what this means is there is no way to get a UWP app that will run on an Xbox Series X under dev mode, at least not as of the making of this episode. Now, for me, I recommend that you select Vulkan as the default renderer, but I do find that some games work better with OpenGL, so you will need to experiment if your game isn't running well. There's also the option to internally increase the resolution. I recommend 2x for a sweet spot and enable AMD FSR for your upscaling, but you can easily create game-specific overrides for all the games. As you go down through your game list, you'll notice a handy compatibility icon on the main screen that quickly tells you how compatible the game is. A green means that it's in the fully playable category, so it might be a good idea to take a look at the compatible list of games and see if the one that you want to play is on this list before proceeding. However, the Vita 3K developers themselves indicate that because there's been some significant enhancements and improvements made to the emulation over the last few months, this list is not up to date. So it might be a good idea to go back and retest some of the games that weren't working previously because you might be surprised. One great example of a game that went from pretty much a broken buggy mess to one that's almost fully playable is Gravity Rush. Now, as you can see, Gravity Rush runs really well here, 
And I'm also testing it out on my Valve Steam Deck, which runs really, really well. Now, of course, we're talking about Gravity Rush and one of the difficulties with Vita emulation is emulating the various features of the Vita when it comes to its emulation. And we're talking about things like touchscreen. Now, touchscreen is fully implemented in all the versions that I've tested on Vita 3K. What this means is if you have access to a touchscreen like on the Valve Steam Deck, you can easily just simulate the touch functionality. And if you're running Vita 3K on a PC that doesn't have a touchscreen, you can simply emulate the touch using a mouse. Now, unfortunately, when it comes to other features of the Vita, such as gyroscope functionality, that is still to be implemented. And I'm not really sure where that lives on the list of features to implement, but I do want to point this out that even though a game such as Gravity Rush does finally run, and it does look really, really good, there are still some things that need to be figured out when it comes to the Vita emulation. So let's go through a bit of testing. Now, I tested a selection of different games across a bunch of different genres. Now, because I'm someone that is more into the arcade style of games, there are a lot of RPGs, especially the Japanese style RPGs and things like that, that are very, very popular on the PlayStation Vita that I didn't test. But once again, go through that compatibility list because my understanding is a lot of these games that were kind of developed in Game Maker, for example, will be fully playable. Now, as far as the testing that I did, I tested a range of different things. The first game that I tried was Uncharted. Now, this is a game that once again, was having a lot of difficulty running under Vita 3K traditionally. As you can see here, this is running on my PC and it runs quite well. Now, this is not considered fully playable yet. It definitely does have its issues, but it absolutely does get in game and offers a playable experience at least. Now, this is something that I found was quite buggy. So when I tried to run Uncharted on my Valve Steam Deck, now keep in mind, we're running a Linux build instead of a Windows build. I couldn't really get much success with Uncharted running under Linux. So your mileage will definitely vary, but this is a very promising start. Now, the next thing that I moved on to was TXK by Llamasoft. This is a classic PS Vita game. And if you like arcade games and you like Jeff Minter games, then you'll absolutely fall in love with this game. This game is near flawless. I couldn't really notice any issues whatsoever as compared to the original. And this runs great everywhere. I tested it on my PC. I tested it on my Valve Steam Deck, as well as my Ioneo Air, which is a PC based handheld, which runs the game exceptionally well. Now, moving on, I also tested Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Now, this one actually ran quite well. It was green on the compatibility list. The only issue that I found was that Ryu's and Ken's fireballs were not visible, which to be completely honest is a game breaking issue. And I personally wouldn't keep this in the playable state. I'd probably move it out of there, but I get the intent here. But look, overall, this runs exceptionally well. Now, another fighting game that I tested was Mortal Kombat. Of course, the PS Vita version is a little underrated and this Vita version is quite incredible. The good news is on my Valve Steam Deck, Mortal Kombat runs near flawlessly. I was having a blast playing this game. It didn't really miss a beat. The only issue that it had was when it needed to compile shaders, it would drop its frames, but that's something that you kind of get with pretty much any emulator out there or any modern emulator where you have compiling of shaders running at the same time as the gameplay. But look, Mortal Kombat ran exceptionally well. Now, moving on, I also tested Freedom Wars. Now, this is a very popular PS Vita game. Not my cup of tea, but a game that I was told that I should probably test for this video. And I did. And look, this game runs great. Now, I think Freedom Wars was another game that traditionally had its issues on Vita 3K, but I was able to play at least the introduction sequence and play at least the first 30 minutes of it. And I didn't notice really any issues other than some lighting issues with the game, some rendering issues that cropped up. But overall, Freedom Wars, I would consider to be fully playable. Other games that I tested that ran near flawlessly was Dragon's Crown, a very popular PlayStation Vita game. And if you haven't played Dragon's Crown, it's an awesome side-scrolling hack and slash dungeon crawler experience, which is really, really awesome. It reminds me of the Dungeons and Dragons games that came out for the Capcom CPS2 arcade system 
all those years ago. You can have four players playing at the same time. It's a really fun experience. Another game that I tested was Persona 4 Golden. This ran quite well. But to be completely honest, there's really no reason why you need to run Persona 4 Golden under Vita emulation when the PC version is right there for the taking. And you can run that natively on Steam, of course. Ridge Racer was another game that was a yellow on the compatibility list, but I actually had quite a bit of success running this game. I used the Vulkan renderer rather than the OpenGL and I got a lot of good performance. And of course, I only really played about an hour's worth before moving on. So there may be issues later on in the gameplay. Another game that I thought was near perfect was Virtua Tennis. This is by Sega and I love the Virtua Tennis series. This game looked and ran great. 60 frames per second didn't miss a beat other than the slowdown and stutter when compiling shaders, but the experience was really, really impressive. Ratchet and Clank The Collection was another game that ran quite well overall. It ran at 30 frames per second on my PC, and when running it on my Steam Deck, it ran quite well there as well. But look, overall, very, very good stuff. Now, I do want to talk about some of the games that refused to run or got to the menus and crashed or whatnot, because there's definitely a selection of Vita games, exclusive Vita games, that people are probably interested to learn more about. The first one is Resistance. Now, this is a AAA game that came out for the PlayStation Vita, considered a very, very good game. It gets to the in-game menu, but unfortunately, I can't get this one to go in-game. Hopefully, that's something that gets addressed in a future update, but for now, it doesn't run very well. Another game that was green on the list was Maramusa. Now, I tried running this, but unfortunately, after the first battle, no matter what configuration I set it to, a combination of either Vulcan, OpenGL with the upscaling or FSR, whatever configuration I had set, it just crashed after the first battle every single time. So that's a little bit disappointing. I also wanted to make note of a very popular PlayStation Vita game known as Tearaway. Now, Tearaway is one of those fantastic experiences on the Vita, and unfortunately, it's still not possible to play on Vita 3K, at least as of the making of this episode. Other games that I tested and couldn't get to run properly was Injustice, as well as Need for Speed Most Wanted. These are very popular PlayStation Vita games, but unfortunately, neither of them ran with any level of success. But I don't want this to end with a negative. I don't want to certainly take away from the really great strides that Vita 3K has made over the last few months. Now, before I go, I also want to mention the Valve Steam Deck because that is a very popular handheld that a lot of people have. And I do want to let you guys know that yes, Vita 3K runs really great on the Steam Deck. In fact, it's probably the optimal way to play Vita games in many ways if you think about it because it's a handheld, it has a touchscreen, it has the appropriate gyro controls as well. So it's really just a matter of Vita 3K kind of continuing to get updated with future enhancements. And look, I personally think that if you're wanting to play PlayStation Vita games, then a handheld device such as the Valve Steam Deck, as well as the newly released ROG Ally, I think would be a really great experience for you. Now, I've also been told that Vita 3K runs on Android. Now, unfortunately, the phone that I have, my Android phone, is quite old, so there's really no reason to try to run Vita 3K on it. But I have heard with a modern phone with a Snapdragon processor, you can get some great performance out of it. And I do want to mention this because I know a lot of people are very interested in running Vita games off their phones, and why not? Because, look, it's almost like you were going full circle with something like a Android phone running PlayStation Vita games. So if anyone out there has been testing PS Vita games on their Android device, so let me know in the comments below how things are progressing. I've heard it's running quite well there, but I'm unable to run any tests myself to see the level of performance and compatibility. But let me know what you guys think about PlayStation Vita emulation in the comments below. We are at the point now where things are starting to get really, really good. There's obviously a lot more work to be done and look, most people probably are going to still not bother with PlayStation Vita emulation until at least the compatibility gets better. But I did want to stop and make a video on this because this is a really good emulator that has a lot of promise. And I think 
going into the rest of 2023, we're going to see some really good improvements to this emulator. And this is definitely one to keep your eye on going forward. But we are going to leave it here for today's episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, please don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Bye for now.